Hello everyone, this is Arado and we're here to talk about Liam and the other DPS that the game intended to design as Liam. So the list of characters and other Liam styles um, you can see to the left of the screen. We're going to go through those and hopefully um, be able to help you understand better whether the first Liam is still the best or um, we have other contenders now being the main top DPS whenever you're tackling hard content. Of course, before we start, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Sato-san for the awesome uh, Liam artwork we have on display. Um, when you have the chance, please visit her page. Um, her Twitter handle is Ultima Patria. She does a lot of um, Saga Frontier 1 artwork, um, especially focusing on the Mystics and also some Minstrel Song artwork as well. So yeah. Um, thank you so much, Sato-san, for the awesome uh, Liam artwork. And with that, we're gonna start this video with the first Liam. So we all know about the first Liam because he is already available in Global. Um, just to run through what he does, he gives a attack and defense boost to everyone at round start. Um, he needs 4 turns to have a full stack of 5 bullets. So because of his passive that he already uh, loads one of the bullet at um, round start, or actually battle start. And then he also has 20% damage mitigate. He has 20% attack with an extra 20% attack on hitting the enemy weak point. And then this Liam introduces the wind bullet. Um, it's a D damage slash and blunt element. And then he gains BP plus one every, every shot of the wind bullet. And then I would be covering as well the offensive stat each of the style does so that we have a view of um, you know, what are the numbers. And then unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the damage calculation. So it's more of showing you numbers and stuff. And then hopefully that helps you understand these characters. So the first Liam, um, he has 112% dex with 14 extra points. And then at full stack of five bullets, that he is left with 1 LP. So the way this Liam works, and for the other Liam styles as well, that they would charge 5 bullets. So 1 is pre-charged for this style. So you would your choice would be Wind Bullet or Ice Bullet from the, um, the free S style. So it's suggested that you would have 1 Ice Bullet and then 4 Wind Bullet. But um, personally for me, whenever I use this Liam, I just charge uh, five times of the wind bullet and because that is because that I can spam anti-material shot all the time. So the way it works is anti-material shot is 8 BP. Um, whenever Liam um, does a single target attack, he would follow up with five of the bullets you have charged. So with wind bullet charged five times, you would gain, you would gain five BP out of that five wind bullets. So in turn, you would gain that eight BP back being able to use um, anti-material shot again the following turn and so on. And also anti-material shot has an endurance debuff that would allow your party to do better damage if you have other um, physical offense um, characters with you. Um, other than that, after charging the bullets, it's, um, it's a game of keeping Liam alive strategy. Um, and not only for this style, but also also for the second and the third style that we're going to go through. So keeping Liam alive because he's the main DPS. Once he's down, um, if the boss has very tiny HP, then probably the party can finish. But if not, um, the party might be in trouble because you lose um, firepower from the how much Liam can do as, as much damage as possible. So yeah, that is the first Liam. Now we move on to the second Liam. So the second Liam is personally my favorite in JP. So this second Liam um, has some mechanics with him in terms of whether in full HP or at critical HP. So um, he, and then in terms of stacking his bullets, uh, he needs five turns to charge up the five bullets. And then he introduces attack bullet, which is a D damage and blunt element. Um, it gives an attack boost a small effect every shot. So when you see um, the uh, second Liam do its, his attack, that you would see incremental damage as he does the attack revolver. And then um, up front, he has 30% attack 
and then at full HP so let's cover the full HP first so at full HP he would gain 20% attack extra and then he has a maybe 50% chance 5-0 to dodge enemy attacks um, it's an extra large effect so uh, extra large chance rather and then gamer uh, noted that it's a 50% chance so um, I'm just gonna put it out there with a question mark and then if he is not at full HP nor at critical HP he doesn't have any dodge or any extra attack or damage mitigate now when he reaches a critical HP he would rather than getting a 20% attack from full HP he would rather get 30% attack being at critical HP and then Rather than dodging enemy attacks at full HP, he would gain 40% damage mitigate being at critical HP. So just something to note of, he only gets extra stuff at full and critical HP, nothing in between. And then the good thing about this Liam is he has a second life. So I didn't put this as an auto revive because whenever Liam reaches 0 HP, he would go back to critical HP or like 30% HP I think so he is at the point where he has uh, maximum attack and maximum damage mitigation um, so as you know with egg battle being the hardest one we have in global um, Starquake is like our worst nightmare when using Liam so this Liam is able to dodge Starquake with no well at the 50% chance so when he chooses to dodge the um, Starquake then he wouldn't be dying from it because deflect doesn't count as an LP damage as well. And the problem with this Liam is he he has a very expensive single target attack, which is the full power shot. Um, I don't recall whether it's SSSS damage, but it's very high BP, very high compared to anti-material shot, which is just 8 BP. So you would have to strategize your way in charging your BP. Um, whether by using attack bullet or you would like to inherit wind bullet or you would want to inherit like how I do it is anti-material shot and then charge up your BP and then keep firing those um, anti-material shot with five times of the attack bullet but again um, the problem there lies where Liam is limited to just doing blunt damage just like a regular um, gun user so just you have some extra stuff to think about when using this Liam but overall I feel that he has a lot of utility with the full HP and critical HP that I would rather use him than the first Liam all right so now we move on to to the third Liam so the third Liam um, it's kind of like a step up to the first Liam um, so the first so the third Liam also needs four turns to charge up five bullets because one bullet is already pre-charged at the start of the battle and then at round start he gets a one-time damage block so he would be able to take zero damage and that's very important because if he take if he doesn't take any damage for that turn he would gain BP plus three at the end of turn and then gain an extra three BP of course going to the next turn so that's important because um, his skill number three, um, Acrobat Grace, is um, uh, is an 11 BP skill. So when you charge up Frozen Bullet, oh, I'm sorry. So let me go to Frozen Bullet first. He introduces a new bullet, uh, Frozen Bullet. It's D damage. It's cold and blunt element. And just like Wind Bullet, um, it gives BP plus one per shot. So with the extra 3 BP for not getting any damage for that turn and then the 5 BP from the 5 uh, frozen bullet that he would gain 8 BP and then extra 3 BP going next turn that he would be able to um, use Acrobat Grace again um, the following turn. So Acrobat Grace is 20% um, attack boost to him so guarantees a um, that he would have uh, the maximum damage that he can do um, to himself with his self buff unlike um, the first and second Liam where they rely on anti-material shot um, to be able to do more damage um, and that's the condition that they are able to inflict the endurance debuff for third Liam with acrobat grace he would just um, um, do attack boost to himself and then keep on shooting those frozen bullets or you know 
if you want to mix it up with wind bullet or attack bullet as well or ice bullet at that it you know there's so much uh, to consider with the four styles that liam has and then the four different bullets that you can play around with um right now i'm still seeing the second liam as um, the better one but it might change when um, i start using the third liam and then i see the damage difference to it and then um one thing i had to mention is the decks so from the first liam to the third liam it's 112 percent for the first 115 for the second and then 116 for the third so it's just minimal um dex in increment to them and then um they would have I, I would say extra um i think it goes to the the damage that they can do for, and the passive attack that um they would have and i think this liam has um 30 percent attack if i'm not mistaken so that's one thing to consider as well sorry i forgot to put that on the text okay so now we move on to silver so silver is uh udx silver is also one of the early release of a different character that's not liam to try to do um as much damage as possible just like liam so for silver she would need one turn to stack um, two times of frost ravine and then 30 percent heat up to herself so the reason for that is just like liam she would pre-charge herself with her skill number two um, her skill number two uses two lp and then it charges up one frost ravine whenever she does a, an attack and then it also gives 15 percent heat up so with another use of the um the skill number two that he would she would gain um, another stacking for the frost ravine total of two and then 30 percent heat up and then her skill number three has a moral up extreme effect for one turn so she can use that and then be able to chain be able to follow up with two times of frost ravine and then her stats is uh, 20 percent attack 30 percent damage mitigate because she has high protect tension um, she is martial arts though so that's one thing to consider because um, personally, I, I observed that martial arts have the hard time to deal the maximum damage. It's not like Liam being a gun user that they would have an easier time dealing the, um, the most damage. So her agility is at 112% with 11 points extra and then strength is 104% with 17 points extra. And then Frost Ravine is a sea damage cold and thunder element. At full stack, um, Silver is left with 2 LP, and then if ever she dies in a battle, um, you can revive her and then she would retain her stack for Frost Ravine and the 30% heat up. So one thing to consider with this um, Silver is if you would rather use um, her skill number 3 for the moral up, you know, for the maximum damage, or if you want to use um, Vandalize Plus. So Vandalize Plus got, I, I believe, release if not for the release of udx silver during the orpina banner with kumi miss kumi started the vandalize plus so rather than being a, a one hit attack that it became a three hit random single target attack so that's it i would say it would do better damage and it's a b damage from what i remember so if i'm not mistaken hopefully that's correct but yeah you would have a choice whether to use vandalize plus or that four hit attack from um, from the Halloween style to take advantage of the Remembrance battle, um, Remembrance um, claw, or you know, keep using her skill number three for the moral up effect. It's up to you. Okay, so next up is Saruin. So Saruin, along with um, Liam and the next character Sumire, was released during the four year anniversary. And my apologies, it's going to be a lot for Saruin, so I'll hope to explain it um, clearly and not to cause any confusion. So Saruin um, need, needs three turns to get, uh, to get full stack of his buff. So he does a buff rather than uh, a stack of um, follow-up attacks like Silver, Sumire, or Liam. So at three turns, he would gain 120% shadow attack to himself and then bp plus three at turn ends again for himself as well 
So that would be the malicious wave that you see in the video. So that's the flood-like um, attack. And then at turn starts, he also buffs all status attribute to himself with medium effect. And then he also has a passive where he gives 40% shadow attack to everyone, including himself. Um, and then he also gives everyone the effect of BP plus one after doing any types of um, shadow element attack. So as you saw earlier, um, with Sadoin and Shadaha pairing together, that whenever Shadaha counters the wreck attacks, that Shadaha also gains an extra BP plus one. So that allows Shadaha to keep on using skill number three for the maximum effect of defense boost. As you know, defense boost would stack with one another, so she can keep using that and keep building up her defenses. And then um, on top of all of those buffs, he also has a 30% attack up and 30% damage mitigate to himself. So that's a lot of attacks <laughs> for Sadoween. And then he has a 111% strength and 15% um, extra strength points. At full stack of buffs that he is left with 6 LP. And this is because um, he gets to benefit the part where use certain skill only X amount of times per battle. So his malicious wave, he can only use three times per battle as stated in the um, in the skill description. So after stacking, um, he would be, his rotation is super duper simple. Use skill number one because it's zero BP. He gains um, he gains three BP from the stack. He gains one BP from the doing a shadow element attack, and then he gains. 3 BP for going next turn, so total of 7 BP. And that's what and then his skill number 3 is uh, 13 BP. So that's why every other turn, skill number 1, skill number 3, skill number 1, skill number 3, and so on. That's how Sadowin works. <laughs> and then it's also um physical uh, skill, so you can benefit from a uh, Remembrance Battle Sword. Alright. So after Saruin, lastly, we have, um, I think, my personal favorite um, ever since um, going through this battle and video, which is Christmas Sumire. And she's also my lucky stream gacha pool from yesterday. All right. So Sumire um, needs three turns to have a full stack of follow-up attacks. So it's her skill number three. Whenever she uses that, she gains one stack of that attack. Um, what she does is when she does an attack type of attack that she would follow up with skill number three and then a turn start she also has a damage block one time and then also puts herself in a stealth stance with medium effect for one turn as well when she's hitting the enemy weak point that she gains bp plus two and then she she also d deals extra 15 percent damage and then she has um, as a passive hypertech tension so 20% attack and 30% damage mitigate with a 105% strength and um, I'm not sure if I'm correct with the um, extra points for strength so but yeah 105% for strength and then the limitation so for Sumire she also gets to benefit where um, it the stacking doesn't use LP but instead, it's limited that you can only use this skill three times per battle. So basically, for her, after using three times of her skill number three, if you don't have her former style, the SS style, then you're left out with using skill number two so that you keep on buffing yourself strength and then she follows up with three times of um, skill number three. And because Egg is weak against Slash, that um, she gets to gain um two four six eight so eight bp during the turn and then plus three bp for the following turn a total of 11 bp so it's either you do her skill number two from this style or um you can use skill number three from the former style use the skill number three from former style it does an ss damage it's double element slash and pierce and then it also um does a defense stance down medium effect for one turn so um the party can definitely benefit from that um especially if um sumire can attack first with her having um 
innately high agility. And then she is with a full stack of her follow up attack that um, she get she's left with six LP. The problem with Sumire is um, her stacking only lasts for that round. So for example, um, the Macha and uh, Marigan attack in JP. So it's a two round attack. Um, if you stack everything during the Macha Macha phase of the battle, once you move to round two to Marigan. Uh, you would lose all those stacks um, that you did from matcha so that's one thing to consider and then on the same round you have the full stack and um, sumire dies she loses all her stack of attacks so that's kind of the um, pros and cons for sumire but overall because she has a one-time damage block that it's kind of safe for her to be able to you know be the the main dps she can deal serious damage, I would say. I mean, with Liam, I think Liam can easily do 400,000 damage. And then with Sumire being at uh, style 46 at maximum stats, that um, she can do, I think, 300,000 or 350,000, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, um, that's why I love Sumire. She has up front, has... Um, damage block that can help you help her survivability if not she has high protect tension and then it's sad that i don't have her um, former style but hopefully i can get get it as an off banner in the future so yeah this is the rundown of the quote unquote liam s characters um personally um i would pull for the um the, the first style for sumire in preparation for christmas sumire I would also want to pull for um, Saruin because Saruin's banner is pretty solid having Saruin and Sheraha. Unfortunately, death is on the weaker side on that one. So yeah, for Christmas Sumire, um, I would say it's more of a farmer banner. So you have Aceles, Sumire, and Misty. Um, I am a big um, Aceles fan, so I might pull for Aceles and Sumire. And then for Silver, it's a UDX banner. It's with UDX Silver and Laura. So UDX Laura became a pretty solid uh, single target um, great sword attacker. So she kind of follows that up with the succeeding style that we're going to cover in a separate video. And then Liam 3.0. Uh, he is the sole character for that banner with four off banners. The four off banners are the most popular characters um, for this year, which is um, Valentine Matriarch. Um, summer beachside Gustav, um, L Lunar New Year Matcha, and then I forgot the fifth character, but yeah, the, those are the off banners with Liam, and I had to pity this Liam. <laughs> Unfortunately, I kept getting um, Matriarch and Matcha, who I already had. Second Liam is with um, Anya and Zosma. Um, Zosma is kind of lacking, so um, I hope that they buff Zosma in, the, in global but if anything um, if you're pulling in that banner you have Anya which is super duper solid to to pull because um, she has that cheap um, buff cleansing capability as a single target so yeah those are my thoughts in this banner um, overall I think all of them perform really well um, Liam does top tier damage still but at the cost of 1 LP, um, Silver might not be able to deliver as good of a damage. But again, it's more on paper. I don't have UDX Silver to actually test it out. So please don't quote me on that one. Um, being martial arts that, yeah, and then only two follow-ups that I don't know whether she would be able to de deliver good damage. The good thing about her is she can cover different elements, which is good. Something that's not common at that too. Um, Saruin and Sumire are both um, solid DPS. Um, Saruin is kind of lack lacking in a way that um, he needs to alternate skill number one and skill number three, uh, while Sumire can just keep on spamming skill number two of this style or skill number three from the former style to be able to do maximum damage all the time, just like um, first Liam with anti material shot with five times wind bullet. So, yeah. Thank you so much everyone for listening i know this is a lot to take um there's a wall of text um to the left 
it summarizes everything that I said. Um, you can pause the video and then read through it or I'm gonna post this as well on Reddit with the text so that if you want to go back to it, um, you can always go back to it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And hope everyone have a blessed and festive season. And see you in the next video or stream.